Okay, I'll share my screen. My screen is visible, Varsadi. Yes, please confirm. Not yes, it is. So today, uh, our demo is for that RDS, that relational database management system, right? So before going to describe that how we can connect the RDS instances, how we can do that, but first we have to know the concept uh, because you know in the serverless architecture, just uh, the screen is visible, right? Mm -hmm. So you see by this screen, right? So this is a one typical serverless architecture, okay? So there mm -hmm. you need one database. Means you are creating a two-tier web application, right? Then uh, database is required, one backend is required, and one frontend is required. So what happened uh, when user hits the frontend? The frontend is available in the web, right? Some uh, www.com that is the url and user trying to consume this url front end okay but our uh, we need to access the database and also the backend okay so mm -hmm. this logic means uh, for, uh, when you hit the front end and front end internally calls this uh, architecture okay this is the lambda so lambda is one service is there and another and inside the lambda service we are connecting that database and the backend so directly we cannot call the database service from the front end that's why we need some api right in our normal case we hit the api right we are trying to connect the database so here also one service is there that is api gateway api gateway is one service where your entire uh, database logic backend that is called through the api and it returns normal simple api okay and then api will call from the front end and that backend so my demo is for that only the database consumes fast we need to consume the database service, right? I have data, I uh, but I don't know how we can uh, upload those data or database into the cloud, the cloud architecture, we don't know, right? And after uh, we consuming the database, then our next task is coming, that is connecting the database from the backend, that is Node.js or in, in, in your case, you can take .NET, PHP, Node.js, any of things you can take it, okay? So, uh, this is the typical web, two-tier web application when you are trying to read the front-end and front-end internally calls the Lambda function through API Gateway. So, API Gateway and Lambda function is internally communicated. API Gateway internally calls the Lambda function and then your data will be available. So this portion i will show you at last how uh, this function is there the how the service is there but first we have to know the database service okay first we'll go uh, the rds rds is managed relational database service you can uh, go to the service from the service tab or you can go here So you can see that uh, all services section, it is coming under database. You can see the database, database service, right? RDS. So I can click from here or RDS, I can click, I can search the RDS service and go to the dashboard. When I click the RDS, it will redirect to the dashboard. You can see the dashboard page is opening, the RDS page is opening, okay? RDS management console, that portion is open. So this is the, your first template, or you can see the dashboard where your database connectivity should be there. 
so first instance is create the database so you can check from the databases if you can create multiple databases so you can go you can see the two databases i have already created and now i'm going to create another database so you can hit the create database this option right you can click the create database At that time one this is all things should be there so one by one i have to describe so first option is standard create standard creates mean it's a aws managed service so aws will take care all the security backup maintenance any updates are required for the internet patch up optimization patch update availability all coming under this service so we recommend the standard create only aws will create we we no need to worry about how from the back end aws will configure these things internally so we just choose the standard create and then second option is your engine option okay where you can see the lots of database you can create from here okay so we can take the amazon aurora mysql maria db sql server oracle these all are sql engine means we need some connector here we are going to create some connector of mysql and this connector we will try to hit from my local machine and see that data i can consume or not we can create or not this is the main purpose of this demo so we can create the mysql in my case i choose the mysql this instance okay when you choose the mysql you can see that mysql community edition with some versions are there right this is the version in my case i will choose mysql 5.7.34 this version the it told that mysql in this version earlier don't support the newest mgrg generation so that is this class is not available uh, over there but recommended version is 5.34 that is the lts long term support so most of the community edition most of the community the aws they will all prefer that mysql 5.7.34 and here you can see the templates there are three options of template that production dev test and free tier in my case i will choose the free tier so free tier option means uh, when we create the ec2 server ec2 instance in the ec2 demo you saw that one free tier eligibility level should be come over there right so in my case also the same thing i will choose the free tier in the rds instance so use rds free tier to develop new application you can create your everything over there in the new application you can create so internally in AWS will manage all these things, the settings, internal configuration, management will all take care by the AWS. So in my case, I will choose the free tier. And you can see that availability and durability, that is the most challenging part of AWS. That's why AWS, most of the organizations nowadays, they prefer AWS. AWS is fault tolerance. Fault tolerance means downtime is very less in any services. Might be API service, might be serverless architecture, that uh, Lambda service, AC2 service, any service you can use, their fault tolerance part is very less. And the durability is 99.999%, so less. And that setting, in the setting part, you can create your own instance. You can give one name, my own MySQL DB. In my case, I will create this name. So this is the DB instance. If you go uh, the info, you can uh, get the all details over there, the identified details. Okay, it specified name that is unique means that name also be unique. It's globally unique this name, and that is uh, means if his name is used by anybody, so globally unique means I cannot use this name for that particular purpose. I have to choose the another option okay and credential settings you can show that admin by default the username is admin and you can go with the auto generated password or you can go with the your own password okay 
So in my case, I will create one password. And you have to uh, confirm, reconfirm the password. That is admin and password I have used. And I uh, so many options I have to create. So don't worry, I have created that document already for your purpose that uh, you no need to worry about the settings and that what value you create. So database JSON I have created. And you can see those options I have used over there. So I have already created this thing. So in future, if you use the RDS, it might be helpful for your next uh, RDS creation. So that's why I have created this document and share in the day after the demo in the chat. Okay. So instance configuration, you can see that DB instance classes. There are many types of instance classes means you can you can click over here so in our case we are going we are using the free tire right so free tire only two two options available dbt2 point micro and dbt3 point micro that is two option is available so in my case i will go to the dbt2 dot micro okay and storage class that is, uh, you can see the info, the storage class, general purpose, provision IOPS, and uh, your magnetic. Magnetic is very less uh, cheap. And in our case, I will take the SSD. It's uh, very durable and uh, the fault tolerance is very less over there. So that's why I have chosen. Choose. Yeah. Hello. Any questions? Hello. Okay, question. Okay, so you can see the allocation storage. Okay, so storage type there are basically three type of storage of RDS. One is general, another is provision, another is magnetic. Magnetic, I, I, we are not prefer the magnetic tapes over there. So in our case, we are using the general purpose SSD. It is a uh, the IOPS is very uh, means the range of IOPS is uh, is there. And 3000 IOPS is there. IOPS here means input output operation. So the fault tolerance means when you click or when you hit the server, that time in very late the data will be consumed in the cloud. So that's why we are using the general purpose SSD. SSD means solid disk type. And auto scaling, we are not choosing any auto scaling. And your virtual private cloud. And you need you know one thing that whenever any instance we are going to create, it might be EC2, it might be S3, it might be API gateway, one VPC is required. VPC means virtual private cloud. Whenever you create the cloud architecture, the cloud project, you you require one VPC. So every request uh, just uh, Every request means whenever we create the any instance, right? This I will going to create the RDS. So RDS will never work alone. It must be present means should be wrapped with that VPC virtual private cloud. So this is my VPC. Inside that VPC, any service should be there. Inside that VPC, we can add any service. And also in the high level structure, we need some subnet. VPC is a broader, and we have to divide it VPC in two places. One is subnet. Subnet must, must, must be divided in two types. One is your public subnet. Another is your Subnet. Public subnet means the port means that uh, the URL. When every services there is two subnet, public and private. Private subnet, any user cannot is unable to hit the private subnet directly. Means private subnet 
not fully optimized for the internet it cannot go to the internet is support internally with other services okay and public subnet will go to the internet it means when we create the ec2 you see that one url was there public ip right public ip means is open to all anybody can use that service and private subnet means private ip that only use internal purpose we cannot use the private subnet openly for the through the internet because uh, that's why when we create the rds or database so we keep inside the private subnet we never keep all the things in the private subnet in the public subnet the public subnet may if i will add the rds instance in the public subnet so database will open to all the hackers might be hack your database directly because everything will be open to their service they, they will get the public ip they will get the security group all the things they will break at a time so in rds we prefer all time we add the rds services or it can be dynamo db maria db what db you are using that is rds services that are we are going to create inside the private subnet so private subnet we cannot hit directly from the outside world okay so that's the main thing so that's why you call, follow that whenever we are going to create any service that time two things should be there one is public subnet another is private subnet so in our case its default bbc is there and also that subnet then the subnet group is there and public access yes we need some public access because when you want to create the hit the database consume the database from your mysql software or workbench that time this option should be yes you can see that amazon ec2 instance and device outside the bbc can connect to your database so here in the demo purpose we are going to create that yes but it's not recommended every time it should be protected one ec2 server inside the ec2 server we are going to uh, configure the rds so rds might not be bare to open to anybody can access from the outside one right database we we are not allowing any organization cannot allow the database or any security purpose things that can allow to others okay this is the organization data that data security data governance should be preferred over there so we have to consume this thing we have to remember this thing. for my demo purpose i will add that yes yes means we can consume it from the outside okay so it provides some endpoint and from the endpoint we'll go into here we create one new bbc by new bbc creation Any name you can prefer over there. Availability zone. I am not adding any availability zone over there. And additional configuration. You can see the database port. By default, RDS uh, comes with the three three zero six. This port number. You can see that TCP ITP protocol over there. We can exchange our server communication with this port. This is a by default port. Okay. And in our case, the we are going to add the database authentication and uh, the password authentication. So every time when we create or consume the database, that time it should be authenticated through password. That's why I have used the password. Additional configuration, initial database name, my first creation. This name we have to add it. Any parameter group that also optional. By default, it's okay. And one thing the backup and retention period seven days. That means with the seven days, the seven days it automatically create the backups from the DB purpose or backup retention period. The backup retention period determines the period for which you can perform a point in time recovery. Means if any uh, fault tolerance should be there or any problem should be occur, so we can get the backups. So that's why seven days backup we can perform. And monitoring, enable enhanced monitoring. This option you can optional, you can choose or not. In my case, I'm not going to choose anything. And 
enable maintenance the auto minor version upgrade means any patch should be upgraded any configuration should be upgrade that that's why this option should be enabled okay so this is optional but it's recommended that you can always check and tick that enable auto minor version upgrade and delete protection is yes, enable the delete protection or not I means if anybody can delete so that time if you if you're going to check that one so accidentally some delete might be occurred so that is preventable so that option if you check so you can restore your database from the scratch on whatever you have created so this, in my case i have not also adding this checkbox and this is the last thing there your monthly cost of rds and then 750 hours of dbt2 micro is free means 750 hours we can get free consume free access of amazon rds okay after that it can be chargeable and 20 gb is free and 20 gb auto backup free after that if you have huge database huge connectivity so many scalable architecture you are going to create that time it might be charged but up to 750 hours it is there is no charge in it just i will want to check the options one second before going to create backup yeah database engine version template i will choose filter username public access yes connectivity ipv4 just a minute i'm going to change this thing connectivity ipv4 public access yes create new uh, password database authentication your password authentication maximum storage result thousand hello yes any other questions hello no no anime is joined okay. no, no. Just so, so that is the options and i'm already created the document for that because there are huge option over there so as a json i have uh, already created the options uh, so i'm just reach it if i missed anything or not then i'm going then after that i'm going to create this one. so backup and then we'll automated backup maintenance delete protection disable protection disable maintenance also with the one ppc security i have created the ppc security one minute just going to check this thing hmm. all good all options are correctly selected and configured in our case we are going to configure the mysql from the rds you can check how many database options are there in my case i will check the mysql and then try to hit when you create the database it will take some time for configure is all settings and you can check that it's going to create until and unless your database is fully configured from the AWS side, that it takes uh, some time because it's my own SQL DB. And endpoint is not, not released. Uh, I mean, until and unless your database might be configured from the AWS, you did not get any endpoint. endpoint will get after your database will restore or initialized for the reusing purpose and then your endpoint you can get and your credentials you can also get from there in my case my master username is admin and password i have used that issue 900 
and in point also come over there when the database creation is fully configured from the AWS side. We have to wait some time for creating the database. Earlier, I have created two databases and they are stairs. Also, setting you can also customize with so many settings I have used over here. So you you can check that size you don't want to see that time uncheck it and save that so size will not be available in the instance. So in that settings you can and 20 resources per page it will show. So if you check that 20 resources, it will show up to 20 resources at further 20, 50, 100. So these settings are there and columns of the table is also be managed and configurable from the AWS side. What column you need to check, you can just check it there and then click the continue button and this column will be available for this. So it might be take some time and our database will be created this region us east 1a region is available over there but other setting might be taking some time so that's why we have to wait it's not my hand it's required some time from the aws side and after that we can proceed the next part okay if there are any question you can ask me No, 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 no. Okay. So you means uh, one the structure is there, and I have just want to giving that overview of that serverless architecture. That demo might not be possible today because is very um, uh, so many art, uh, points should be covered, but. Uh, that architecture just I want to uh, give some brief overview how the serverless architecture will work okay so it uh, just uh, so serverless means uh, we all all think that there is no server so, but it's not possible that without any server we are going to consume any services from anywhere it might be your on device it might be your cloud so if you want to create the serverless architecture in the cloud, that time uh, you have to configure internally so many things. So as an example, if I'm going to create two tire web application, right? Means your front end and back end and database also be there. So that time uh, we are not going to create that EC2 because EC2 is not serverless, server is there, right? Where whatever the services are providing by the AWS for the object level, so that type of thing we are going to create. Lambda. Lambda was one service that is the event based service. We need what? One required one API from the front end. We require one front end. We require some API. We require some database connectivity and some back end, right? So for that serverless architecture, I basically favor because I have created. Uh, 20 plus serverless architecture in previous organization that time i have used this kind of things they are this very handy and this very useful because ec2 server is going to means it's, it's, it will create so much bills means you have to pay many bills uh, from, uh, from the organization so we have to cost optimization for that kind of things we have to use this uh, these services so front end we are going to use that s3 that simple storage service and api gateway is one service that will create the api and internally means when uh, and for the uh, back end and database connectivity is uh, clubbed through the lambda and database we are using that rds uh, or maria db sql server anything you are using and from the back end, there is plenty of options AWS has provided. That screen I will show you after this demo. You can, in my case, I'll choose 
Node.js. You can choose php.net, any backend, and connect that a database to the Node.js connectivity and create that event. And event I will I will consume from the API gateway. So when user click the front end, we are going to first observe the front end. And front end, uh, when any service was there, the API, it's coming from the API gateway. And API gateway internally call the Lambda functions. So it's an event-based service. And, and then this way, our purpose of the two-tier web application will be easily, uh, easily resolved. And you one service also be there for your user management, that is, uh, is Amazon Cognitive. This one service also be there. Here you can manage your users, all users. It's not the AWS user. Your web application user you can manage. And Amazon Cognito to you are going to appearance to the API gateway, and then your front end will be execute all the things. Okay. Any question in that lambda function or anything? Just I'm going to share the screen, and then you will understand. No question at all. Lambda functions will work just like um, yes, Firebase, right? No, no, Firebase means Lambda is the event based service, okay? Uh huh, okay. So, means uh, it's or it's uh, we have it does not execute alone. Lambda it requires somewhere somebody who those are create this function, okay? Okay, so it's the event based, so even you need to trigger, right? Without trigger, any event cannot be generated or on this, right? So we are going to create this lambda, lambda function, this event we are create, okay? And from the API, mm -hmm. API gateway, I will attach with the lambda function, okay? So so you have to write a script for that. Uh, you have to write means if you are using the middleware, your node.js, right? Take uh, one yeah. example or dot net. So node.js environment lambda will provide this okay. this uh, screen i will share with you okay how this the code i will not write but how it is work that this uh, this service i do want to i will show you after this step, okay sure, sure, so sure. you can okay. see that like, this environment lambda will provide node.js mm -hmm. where simply node uh, you have to connect the node.js to rds this endpoint you are going to create right right okay. now we'll get the endpoint and node.js connect the database and node.js is from the connectivity with the lambda event okay yes and this lambda event i will connect to the api so when i hit the api I means you have, suppose you have two functions one is post one is gate right yes yes so i'll create one post api and uh -huh. create one gate api uh -huh. so post api one controller that is you can say the controller one okay. post controller i'll create and then i will attach the lambda function on the post with that configuration the code will be changed over there right uh, yeah. we are not going to create the same code for the gate and post that code yeah. might be different for the gate and post request right yes. we're not going to add these things and then lambda function will hit the node.js connectivity and node.js will got the database mm -hmm. after you will get the data then you pass the json and it, it will return to the front end okay that means it's just it's like just middleware and that is the serverless architecture where I am not using any EC2 server. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Bro. Okay, I am not using any EC2 server over here. Mm -hmm. Means when you apply the EC2 or any other Ubuntu Linux the servers, mm -hmm. that time it is not called serverless. Serverless means what objects, what services AWS has provided for the cost optimization purpose, that thing I leave. Okay. Same thing you can configure inside the EC2, but their charge is very high. Ah, ah. Okay. I'm not, I'm not denying that you're not going to miss that time. Lambda is not required. You are directly creating the Node.js application in the API from the EC2 server and the from EC2 you are going to hit the whole thing. Okay, but okay. serverless architecture, I'm not touch the EC2 or any other thing. So, okay. Let's see. Yes, you can see that database my own DB is created. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can see that the endpoint is provided, or you get your endpoint from the view cadence. You can see earlier 
only two things were appear right username and password endpoint was not there because the server was not rds was not configured properly that was until and unless your server not configured set the from the aws this url will not be available okay right now this url is available right now i am going to hit or connect the mysql from our mysql workbench so this is your environment mysql workbench or any other tools you can use for any issue create these things my own connection the host name you have to provide this endpoint because local host from the local host i'm not going to hit right i i i, I need the aws host endpoint this thing i like root for that purpose admin in my username admin Put in world that your password that is copy for mail and just paste over here. And okay. Let's see that database connection is there or not. Let's hit the test connect. You can see one message is there, right? Successfully made the MySQL connection. That means my local MySQL workbench time means com successfully communicated with that AWS. Now, okay. Click over there. It requires some time and it will open your environment where you can create your DB, your server, uh, your store procedure uh, queries. You can see same one page will open, right? Now this page is connected with my AWS, not the local. You remember that I have created this database, right? When I configure the RDS, that time I have created that my first DB creation. And this is my database, right? So to activate this, because we, we saw that three different DBs. One is system database. Another is your you know, you know DB that is also the system. My own database is there, so you have to activate that means until and unless you are not if any uh, perform any uh, table you are going to create inside script that will not work. So you have to use that one. My first DB creation. You notice one thing that it activate right means it's showing bold now some script i'm going to perform that you can write same thing means other thing are not teamed and create your table query and some value Table is refresh the section. 
the person table is created. Okay. So this is the same means there is no difference. So here all the things is stored in the AWS because my endpoint. If you go that manage connections, my endpoint is there from the AWS RTS Amazon AWS. So locally I am not add anything. It's coming from the RTS. Okay. So is there any questions? I think you all understood how we are going to perform, right? Connectivity. So one question. Yes. Um, so for MongoDB, we got Mongodb called Compass, correct? Yes. Does this workbench setup connection in the same way? Uh, means in the workbench, this is the home page, right? Uh -huh. Yes. You have to create, click that. You set up new connection page is there, right? Yes. You have to provide the connection name. Any name you can provide. That is my own connection. This name. Okay, connection name. Uh -huh. This name. Okay. Okay. So another question is. Yes. So that means this um, connection that is quite uh, up. Uh, it will be a um, normal SQL based or uh, data. A normal my SQL yes. Ah, SQL based data. Okay. So normal means what? I, mean, I cannot understand. What is normal? Uh, the tabular format. Yes. The tabular format. I'm not much in. Uh, not much into DB side. So I'm okay. that SQL means if you are watching the SQL side, na. Uh -huh. So you have to ask writing any uh -huh. script SQL uh -huh. from that because uh -huh. you cannot directly hit the database from the correct. Form. Correct. Correct. In because correct. some middle layer, right? Ha ha ha. So middle layer. In my case, I will choose Node.js. You uh -huh. can choose anything. Achha. Anything you can use from the back end purpose. Uh -huh. Then from the back end, you have to connect your database. Right? Your hmm. connectivity you have to create. Your okay. environment you have to create for okay. the connectivity purpose, right? Uh -huh. Otherwise, you uh -huh. cannot mean I I'm not I don't know where I have to go. Uh -huh. So I will go by my food or I will go by train, I will go by plane. Yes. That I don't know. So I have to know my destination, right? Ah, ah. To know this, this is my SQL I have to create, right? Ah, yes. So that's a host. This ah. connection you have to create, okay? Ah, ah, ah. So you not expect that after creating these things, I will uh, from the front end it will directly call. No, ah, no. There is there is no way. But this is not the architecture because hmm. any security hmm. without authentication validation. You cannot call from the front end. You have to need some authentication part, okay? okay. So you need some middleware. Mm -hmm. Just a minute, I will show one thing. Then your uh, uh, query might be solved. Yeah. So you can see that lambda, right? Yeah. Lambda function. Mm -hmm. Run code without thinking about servers. It's tagline, okay? Uh -huh. You have to run your code without thinking servers. It's a managed service, okay? So servers may is kind means that means it's a event based. It is configure. You have got not it. configure any servers. Got it. The point event based service. I got yeah, it. It's a event based. Means, uh. And one thing you have to remember: any any event cannot be generated by it own. It requires some trigger, right? Yes. Without trigger, so you can see the function, right? Normal function means that is sorry. And, and just a minute. In the lambda, I will write function, normal function. Function in function means if you go in the uh, Node.js or anywhere. anywhere, function means function. There is no hidden meaning in function means any one wrapper where might more than one uh, line of code we can execute and perform right. That is a function of the def function definition right. Create function. I have not added anything, so you can see that so many options are there right. So author from scratch my function hello world.
You can see runtime. Runtime means environment. Whatever I told you, na? In the environment, AWS will provide. So in my case, I on the back end, I will add the notes, right? So you can take the notes, you can take Python. Those are experts, means somebody has created their API in Python. Somebody has created their API in .NET, Java, Ruby, what you want, you have to tell the AWS. They will create the environment for you. You have to write the code only, okay? Node.js, and then change the execution rule. I'm not going to create anything for the demo. Let's create function. So you will see that by default, one Node.js function will be created, okay? Hello, world, okay? You can so status 200 and hello from lambda. It will create from the Node.js, okay? If you go to test to my event. So you can create authentication also from here? No, authentication part is coming another service. Achha. That is called your, uh, you can take a WF service, any CL service, that, de that, de defy, that depends on the business logic, okay? Achha. I'm just create the service uh, for that writing code, okay? From the ASQL, MySQL code, or from the Node.js, okay? Now, my event, You can see the response is coming. Right? Hello from Lambda. Uh -huh. Response is coming. You have to create this thing. Okay. Uh, it's cool. Huh? So by what means your handler is required because it's an event. Mm -hmm. So event requires some handler. Handler mm -hmm. means some trigger will hit the service, this mm -hmm. event, and then it will be executed. Mm -hmm. That's why handler function is required. Otherwise, everything is same. Node.js. Okay. Yeah. If you need to I require the MySQL, you have to import this thing, you have to authenticate this thing, import the MySQL service, everything is the same. And you have to upload the code, okay? Over here. By default, once directory is there, right? Hmm. And you have to also upload the code. And one service is there, that is your API gateway. And I'll create the API from there. Now you have to explore by your own, okay? Okay. You see the API is there. HTTP API. You have to build this option. Okay. Add integration. Integration name you have to provide HTTP, Lambda, whatever you know, use. So everything is there. You have to connect and that Lambda function. Okay. Then it will be work. REST API. You can see the REST API page is there, right? New API, you will create API name, description, everything is there. You have to explore and you can understand. It's very easy, this API gateway. And you have to connect that these things from that Node.js to RDS, okay? Okay, so here we can create some simple uh, API headers. Without, yes. much, without much uh, logic behind it. Yes, because environment, the serverless architecture environment, AWS will provide you. You, mm -hmm. you have to just know your business logic from the mm -hmm. what uh, versions, which software or which uh, framework you want to use. Mm -hmm. This in, in, in environment you have to choose. Okay. After choosing the environment, you have to write the code and from that, you have to connect the MySQL, SQL Server, RDS, whatever you need, then it will be executed. Okay, for sure. Thank you. Okay. You have to explore you at your own. Yes. This is the service, means uh, thousands of code, thousand uh, types I can I can create. Okay. Mm -hmm. But until and unless you are not create, mm -hmm. so you get uh, from this uh, six days session, you got some overview, right? How AWS will work. 
Hello? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so these sessions, uh, you can understand that how AWS will work, all right? Yes. I will cover the EC2, I will cover the S3, RDS services, a little bit of this thing. Mm -hmm. so that is required from the developer's point of view. Yeah. You only know you need the environment and you have to create the things. Okay. Thank you. And you have to use that S3 for the Cloud BD Explorer API and you can use that. Mm. We explore at your end and this uh, pages I will share with you. Mm -hmm. this okay. And in case for the RDS, I will also say what I need. I have already created these things. And also that one container based services demo I have created and that I will also share with you. This thing. The EC2, e ECS, this is. Basically, cluster based service. So, this thing I will also say. You have to just explore these things, you have to create, and then your web API will be created inside the cluster. Thousands of services is there in database, but you have to know the cloud computing concepts. Also. Then you will create by your own. Not an issue. Okay. Um, already given the feedback. Yes, I already given the feedback actually. Okay, okay. So I hope everybody can understood or it might be help in your next projects or also if you are going to create the AWS or things. Okay. So that might be started with this. <laughs> huh? What? Want to get started with this, sir? Ah, uh, and then uh, means if, if this is a very huge AWS, right? Within five or six days, everything will not be covered. Because, uh, but I mean two or three things I am going to touch that mm -hmm. is three, that is very required. Without mm -hmm. S three, as a developer point of view, you cannot create anything. Another mm -hmm. is EC two, EC two server. One is required the RDS. Okay, and this all documentation I think I have uh, already uploaded so many things, and these two or three days uh, that. Last day, yesterday, and two days documentation I will upload shortly. Okay. This documentation I will upload in the sure. chat or in the uh, Priya has shared one link. There sure, I will upload. Sure. sure. Well, I have one question. Apart from yes, yes. AWS uh, training session that we yes. just, uh, completed, um, want more in under DevOps. Yeah, I mean, one more thing like DevOps. Yes, yes. DevOps training uh, you you required, right? So DevOps you will देखो DevOps जो है that kind that might be come under every service. But DevOps individually you can create, or you are going to create AWS AWS with DevOps, Azure with DevOps, GCP with DevOps. जितना cloud है उसका हर एक का DevOps है. First, okay, means AWS can be DevOps. This may CI CD pipeline may be that CI CD pipeline will create. Yes, okay, correct, 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 correct. AWS. Yes. That is the different uh, means if you are going to appear correct. the exam, hmm. that is different exam. That is no, the use case of you. But as a developer point of view, huh. AWS CI CD is not required because the mm -hmm. DevOps team will take care all the things. Okay. But in the DevOps, it's come under that you can learn Jenkins for the DevOps purpose, right? And SAP and Ansible and your some, but before all going to the tools, because they, these are all container management tools, right? Your deployment tools, yes, these are all tools. But I am suggesting that first you have to understand the concept of three things. Some Linux command, how yes. Linux command will work. Yes. Okay, because Correct. many environment you find for the DevOps that are Linux. Yes. yes. Most yes. of the cases you less of the cases you can the Windows. Mm -hmm. Windows environment you will not provide. Okay. Yes. And everywhere Linux. So Linux command you have to know. You have to yes. explore that yes. sudo. What is called sudo? What is called PW? Yes. So Kashik, uh, yes. already going through uh, Linux admin uh 
trainings and all uh, apart from, uh, matlab, personally and i'm already going through unix uh, and i'm already going through um, this uh, want to get into uh, docker and kubernetes also and cd mm-hmm. pipeline creation and management yes, so, yes. yeah it will be great if you start with that too because uh, <laughs> yeah i am i understood but i already am i don't know means last one or two months continuously i'm taking the not the aws react react yeah, yeah. i know that i know that personally <laughs> take care but i uh, if time permits or anything i obviously i'll start this devops sure. kind of thing that i just trying to clear the concept i am not uh-huh. interested in that tools okay uh-huh. because if you know the cloud computing the service model you don't know the path pass has yes this yes. the concept whatever i describe the first lecture uh-huh. the, concept, the concept you have to know then that might be services you have to think because aws architecture or develop devops whatever you going to become in future mm-hmm. that time two things is required that means your hands should be dirty in this code base mm-hmm. you have to not watching the video you have to come and also trying to create something okay mm-hmm. one thing another is your thinking level that how we can consume this thing how we can get linking link okay. service right okay. Okay. how now much you can explore, then you can get the all answers means got it. Got it. Got because it. aws is updated means i have used uh, last two of five or four to five years aws service so many services i have explored by myself and then i saw that means whatever i learned i just i don't have any session so i don't have any any kind of training i didn't didn't get i only explore from the net and i explore that from the thinking process how we can think the will start there be thinking was yes will there be an assignments yes what is will there be an assignments up ahead admin any will there be any assignment on the session Okay, so I think uh, all the no assignments were allotted, right? So <laughs> assignment I will provide. Okay, you can go okay. with that. Some uh-huh. our serverless architecture you can create. Yes, yes, that, yes. That, that you can you can create and you can show me. I don't I don't have any problem. I can rectify this thing. But you have to trying to create by it your own. Then you can understand. Yeah. Okay, so uh-huh. the structure I will I will give you. and how the api will working on that i also i provide you right okay. what in where you will going to create and that api amazon lambda that rds you are going to create over there na mm, yeah you know it means you have you if you becoming a good uh, that architect or whatever the first expectation that i am not writing the first time every code should be done first time okay you have stuck somewhere that is the main thing how much you can stack how much that that much you can learn that is the main thing okay so if you are you are interested so you can create the serverless architecture sure. okay one project small thing you are create the one front end api and then trying to add this thing from that platform there okay then you will understand you will feel some problem i will definitely help you what is okay okay got it thank you for okay theek hai to i hope the session is uh, enjoy it everybody this session or other session if okay, you will feel like so i'll stop the recording here yes yes if you feel uh, yes yes